morning. <laughs> Good morning. We're just a smidge late this morning, but we were just rocking out here. So I'm excited for you guys uh, to be able to listen to the music and a little bit in the worship. It's been a lot of fun getting it all ready this morning. So, ah, yeah, so good morning. Hi, nice to see you joining. And uh, remember, I cannot see your names as you come in the room, so please make sure to say something in the comments, like hello or good morning or anything you want. Anyway, so here we are. Uh, it is Sunday, September 13th, and uh, we are here for worship. As you might notice, we are here for worship. So yes, the official board uh, met last Sunday uh, in the afternoon. We, uh, we did our, our social distancing and uh, our physical distancing and we met here in the sanctuary and um, it was a good meeting. Everyone had a chance to talk and uh, talk about uh, their feelings and, and how uh, we thought we should progress going forward. Um, essentially, the, the decision at the end was to err on the side of caution, which, uh, you know, makes sense. We, we want to be caring and compassionate in our community. So we are erring on the side of caution. We're going to see how September rolls out and how things are happening in the community and the province around us. And then on October the 4th, we're going to have another meeting. So we are going to continue with our online worship the way that we have been doing it up till now. And on October 4th, we're going to have another meeting in the afternoon at two o'clock. We're going to follow the same protocols and procedures. And at that time, uh, then seeing how September has happened and played out in the province, we're going to uh, make a decision of, of how we will do worship going forward. So uh, you probably will be hearing from a session member uh, in the toward the end of September, uh, asking of your opinion on uh, what you're thinking in this. So I see lots of folks coming in and good morning to everybody. Uh, so I'm just gonna see if I can zip back here and say some good morning. So good morning, Marilyn, good morning, Dot. Good morning, Wendy, good morning, Donnie and Carol. Good morning, April and all the gang there. Hi, good morning, Gerald. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Marsha, nice to see you all. Good morning, Donnie and Dorothy Lane. Good morning, Mom and Dad, hi, nice to see you. Good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Roseanne, nice to see you. Good morning, Jack and Pamela and everybody there. Good morning, Gail, hi. And good morning, Lori and Cohen and Paige, so nice to see you guys. Nice to see you every week. Good morning, Evie and Albert, hi. So yes, good morning to everybody. Um, the upcoming meetings. We have a meeting tonight. If you're a member of the Stewards Committee, there is a meeting. It's going to be downstairs, but in the main uh, sort of area, uh, not in the parlor then, in the main area. Please wear masks when you come. And we have hand sanitizer at the door, and we will make sure that we are physically distanced from everybody as we go about our meeting. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Jean and Richard. Hi, nice to see you guys. Um, then, as it says in the announcements, the next uh, official board meeting will be Sunday, October the 4th. Um, masks. The quilters are making masks and they are making an abundance of masks and they are making some beautiful masks. So we have lots to, to pick from, lots of different sizes, lots of different patterns. I just wanted to bring some out to show you today. So uh, this is one of the adult ones, but they have these, it's the Nova Scotia Tartan, and they have these in all the different sizes. Um, also, uh, so cute, I wanted to show you. Um, so they have, they have large adult, adult, wait a minute, a teen, and then they have, um, children and toddlers, but look at the toddler ones. Oh my goodness, this is a little one, it's cars. Isn't it cute? And then this one has little, little um, Unicorn. unicorns, thank you, unicorns on it, so cute. So I also wanted to show you how good they fit. So this is an adult, this is mine, and also they're, they're two-sided, so this is mine and it fits really good. Over my ears, nice and tight on my nose, on my chin, the sides. It has a really, really good fit to them. They're very comfortable to wear. I wanted to show you the large adult. It's a rare sighting we get to have this morning. Here's Sean wearing the large adult. And see, it fits very good. 
Oh, lots of highs and thumbs up for Sean. Uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so if you are interested in getting one of these masks from the quilting group, please uh, let Helen or Evie know, and they also have the information for when they're here. If you come, you do have to wear a mask and you have to physically distance to pick up your um, masks. But yes, uh, they're Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning. So yes, and good morning, Nancy, and good morning, Clyde and Sharon, good morning. Uh, what else do I have here on my list? Baby quilts. Yes, the quilters still have baby quilts and uh, are, are have, have those for sale. So if you're interested, oh, I saw all the thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, or if you are interested, uh, please contact Evie or Helen. And uh, yes, thank you to everyone um, for all your continued support. If there's any birthdays or anniversaries, please write something in the comments so that everybody can know and celebrate along with you. Uh, we do have um, a list of birthdays to go into next week's bulletin that we'll share with you at that time. Um, oh, Dot said you're looking good, Sean. <laughs> um, and uh, just, a, just a good morning to everyone. I had a chance to, uh, to run into various people through the week and it was so nice to say hello and to see you. Some I didn't recognize because you had your mask on. Uh, if you see John Muirhead out in public, he's really hard. He's got sunglasses and a mask. You, it, take, it, takes a, it takes a few minutes to figure out who he is. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so good morning. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Marilyn. And yes, I'm glad that you love your baby quilt. The baby quilts are beautiful, yes. So I think we've caught up on everything. We did it a little rushed, I know, but uh, we're now at uh, that time when we're starting to think about and get ready for worship together today. So let's just take a minute to sort of center ourselves and gather ourselves together for worship. So, thank you. <laughs> I didn't turn you around. Let us pray. Oh God, we come together in worship today, remembering your great mercy and love for all of humanity. We come as people who depend on your forgiveness and your grace. Through Jesus, you have shown us the way of kingdom living in his kindness, compassion, and gentleness, oh God, your forgiveness transcends whatever wrong exists between us. Grant us the courage to forgive others and to practice reconciliation by kindness of our speaking, the sharing of our resources, and the honoring of your desire for good. At this time, as we worship you on this day, open our minds and our hearts to your ways, O God, and direct us in your path and in your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today uh, comes from the Gospel of Matthew. No, no real surprise there. Like we've been traveling through this Gospel of Matthew uh, in the early summer and here through the fall, and uh, and we continue on. And we're we're still actually in chapter 18. So much happens in Matthew chapter 18 that we've been going through this for the past few weeks, and and it, and it continues. So here we are, Matthew uh, chapter 18, and. Um, so if you want to find Matthew and read along with me, that would be great. So grab your Bible and go to uh, the Greek Testaments, or we call the New Testament, 
and it's in the last quarter of your Bible. So it's pretty easy to find, just right there at the end of the Bible. Uh, and the first book in the New Testament is Matthew. So uh, the first gospel, uh, there are four. So Matthew's the first gospel that we have in the, in the Greek scriptures. And if you want to just zip right along to chapter 18, we're toward the end of chapter 18, um, where Jesus is teaching the disciples, and, and he has been all along. We've talked about this. Matthew is a teaching gospel. There's so much teaching that goes on throughout the gospel of Matthew. And here the gospel continues. And Peter has some questions for Jesus. And he has some questions for Jesus around this idea of forgiveness. Jesus has been teaching them all along. And this topic of forgiveness comes up quite often. So here Matthew, uh, Peter has a question for Jesus. And Jesus answers him with sort of a challenge and then a parable. And it's a pretty well-known parable. So uh, listen along, see if it sounds familiar to you. And uh, if you'd like, read along. We're in chapter 18, we're starting in verse 21 and going right through to the end. And that's verse 35, okay? So it reads, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, falls short in how we behave towards each other, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, no, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to sell accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and he could not pay it. So he was ordered to be sold, together with his wife and his children and all his possessions and, and the payment to be made. So the slave fell to his knees before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord released him and forgave him the debt. But the same man, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow workers who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat and said, pay what you owe me. Then his fellow worker fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and he went and threw him in prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow workers saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the master summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt, and because you pleaded with me, should you not have had mercy on your fellow worker as I has had, had mercy on you? And in his anger, he handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do, every, do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is our gospel according to Matthew. Thanks be to God. Our first piece of music today is a contemporary version of the song Amazing Grace with, uh, it's called Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Christianity, when we think about uh, the teachings of Christianity, and I'm, I'm talking like the fundamental teachings of Christianity, like what Jesus is saying in the Gospels kind of teachings of Christianity, uh, when we think about that, many different words probably come into mind, uh, like caring, compassionate, loving, kindness. Um, but of course, one always jumps up for me, and it's always forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is central to the teaching of Jesus. It's something that comes up again and again uh, by Jesus in his teaching and in Christianity. Um, and it's something we're going to talk about today, but sort of a, a precursor to that. We really need to define what forgiveness means. We have to be very careful around this idea of forgiveness because there's lots of different um, ways that we can go at that that are not healthy and that are not helpful. So forgiveness is not condoning. Forgiveness isn't forgetting, it isn't excusing, and it isn't disregarding. Forgiveness is to release feelings uh, or res of res release feelings of resentment and of vengeance towards someone else regardless of whether they actually deserve it. So think about this. Forgiveness is releasing feelings that we have towards someone else, whether those feelings are resentment or those feelings are for vengeance, for revenge. And we release them, regardless of whether this person uh, is actually deserving of it. So just to be clear, it's not condoning, it's not forgetting, it's not excusing, and it's not disregarding. It is releasing, personally releasing these feelings. And so this is this idea of forgiving, of releasing um, resentment, of releasing ideas of revenge is central to the teachings of Jesus. And we've talked about the Gospel of Matthew, and the Gospel of Matthew is a teaching gospel. It is structured as a teaching gospel. There's all of these times throughout it, um, five big sermons that Jesus does and teaches those around him and the disciples. And when we read the Gospel of Matthew, it is a teaching to us. So it's, it's teaching. And so as part of this teaching, forgiveness is central. And so if we just go back a little bit to Matthew chapter 6, we're going to see that Jesus teaches the disciples and those following him to pray every day. 
And the prayer that they're asked to pray is the prayer that we pray. We pray every Sunday. Collectively, we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. And sometimes when you say something off by heart on a regular basis, you, you kind of sort of just go through it. Go through the motions, right? It's, it's memorized. And we're not really listening to the words. But the words are important. And they are important because every day Jesus is asking us to remember in this prayer and to say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is so central to Jesus' teaching that it's something that we should be praying for every day. And so that brings us to chapter 18, where we are to today's teaching. Jesus is again teaching the disciples, and, and throughout the chapter, there's just sort of been this long lead up. Um, it began with Jesus placing a child in front of them and saying, be like a child, uh, this innocent uh, child, and then, to, then went on to say how to resolve conflict. And then we get here to this concept of forgiveness. So, so let's just look at it. Let's look at the story as it's laid out in the scripture. Let's follow along with what's going on. So first of all, it begins with Peter asking a question. Peter is a delightful disciple. He is so, I just, I love Peter. I love stories about Peter because Peter just, some days he's flying high and he's right and it's awesome. And then some days he gets it all wrong. I find him very relatable. I'm like, okay. I, I can see that. So Peter is, yeah, he's really, every time Peter comes into the story, I'm interested because uh, what's he going to do now? So he comes onto the scene and they've just been talking about conflict resolution and Jesus has been giving them all these uh, methods, very practical methods for conflict resolution in the church. And so then Jesus, uh, Peter's like, so if somebody um, falls short, uh, if somebody wrongs me, uh, in the church, how many times do I have to forgive them? And so he kind of, I think Peter was like thinking he's throwing out a big number, right? He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to not just one or two times, I'm going to say seven times. So he's, he's like, I think he, I think he was aiming, I thought he was, I think he was thinking Jesus was going, whoa, Peter, that was no, 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 man. Like just a couple of times is good. So he said, so should I forgive them seven times? And uh, Jesus is like, oh, no, no. And so we're all expecting them to go, like, no, just two or three times. And, he's, and Jesus is like, no, 77 times. So it's this, it's this huge number, right? And it doesn't mean that we're supposed to be all walking around with little calculators and going, okay, so, you know, so-and-so from the UCW has offended me 74 times now, and I've forgiven every time. Only have three more times I have to forgive them, and then off the list. Uh, no, it's not. It's meant to be uh, uncountable. It's meant to be this great number that is uncountable, this abundance. So, and that goes on in the story, this, this these giant exaggerated numbers. So after Jesus gives this, no, not seven times, 77 times to Peter, he then tells him a parable. And, and we've talked about parables before, and sometimes parables are, no, I would say most every time parables are really hard. And if you, if I, if I am thinking, oh, I get it, I understand this parable, I'm usually not getting the whole parable. I'm usually missing big chunks of it. Uh, because parables are complicated and they're meant to be uh, sort of uh, consumed and thought about and ruminated on and, and contemplated over a lifetime. We're, we're not supposed to just get these quickly. They're not quick little moral stories. They're long time thinking stories. Now this story seems pretty on the level, but there are some really deep things happening here, and there's probably lots of stuff that I haven't even thought of yet, so let's look at it. So there's this king, or lord, or master, and he has all these workers, and one of the workers owes him, and it says, hmm, let's see, what does it say? Like 200 talents, I think it says? 
ten thousand no he owes and ten thousand talents yeah ten thousand talents so do you know what a talent is a talent is equal to twenty years of a common laborer's wage so ten thousand talents he's just he's saying zillions this guy owes him zillions of dollars so already off the bat we're like this is a very exaggerated story how could you even get to a point where you owed somebody zillions of dollars but this worker owes him zillions of dollars so he's like oh you owe me zillions of dollars and uh, you can't pay it so I'm going to sell everything you have including you and your family to try to recoup some of this money and he said he gets down on his knees and he says oh master have patience with me I will pay you everything which again we should kind of laugh because how are you going to pay back zillions of dollars but anyway the story goes on the master forgives him this debt he says okay i forgive you this debt so this guy who has been forgiven of all this big debt goes down the road and he sees a fellow worker who owes him and it says i think it's a hundred silver coins or something like that yeah a hundred denarii um it's it's a few thousand dollars it's not nothing it's a few thousand dollars and a few thousand dollars is a is is a is not an insurmountable amount of money but it, it is an amount of money right it's a good size amount of money uh, that is owed to him and so he shakes him by the neck and he says you're gonna pay me back and it's interesting because the second fellow says the exact same thing he says have mercy with me I will pay you back he says the same thing that he had just said to the master and rather than offering him uh, relief from this debt, he goes, no, I'm going to put you in jail until you pay me back. Which, how can you pay someone back if you're in jail? That doesn't make any sense. So what he's really saying is, I want you to suffer. I want you to, uh, I want revenge on you. I want you to suffer for what you've done. You're not going to be able to pay me back. So you're just going to rot in jail. And of course, everyone else is like, what the heck? Why would you do that? This, is, this doesn't make sense. We just saw that you were forgiven zillions of dollars and now you're throwing this guy in jail for a few thousand dollars. That doesn't make any sense. So they, they tell the master and the master's like, what? No, don't, that's not right. And so he ends up getting uh, thrown in jail himself. The end line is really important to this because it says, to forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So um, what's really interesting about the Hebrew, ancient Hebrew language, in the ancient Hebrew scriptures, um, there's no word for brain. It, everything comes from your heart. So your intellectual reasoning as well as your feelings come from your heart. So when we speak in English, when we talk about feeling things, we talk about from our heart, right? And when we talk about um, thinking things, we talk about our brain, we talk about our, our intellectual reasoning. So um, this idea of forgiveness comes from both your intellect and your feelings. It's, it's, it's not just how you feel to somebody. There is, there is a reasonable reasoning behind this idea of forgiveness my favorite part of this whole uh section in matthew um is something that uh i discovered this summer and i started digging deeper into it and i got really excited because i'm such a bible geek but it was awesome uh so so i think i've told you before that i've been reading the scriptures out loud and it it totally changes how you hear understand scripture so that's been my summer project is to read all of the bible out loud so i and i've not been reading it in order i'm just going all over the place reading a different um book here and there and so uh, this summer uh i think in july i read genesis and i was reading along and i was like oh, i noticed something and i noticed it because i was reading it aloud it and it does it really changes how you understand it so i noticed something and then i dug a little deeper and i found out a little more so this idea where jesus so peter says to jesus how many times should i forgive uh, seven times and jesus says no not seven times but i tell you 77 times there's another place in the bible where it says that 
There's another place in the Bible where there's this seven and 77. Only one other place. This other place and here when Jesus is talking to the disciples. And this excites me so much because there are so many layers to these stories. And the more we read scripture and the more that we see the other passages, we're going to see the connections. So Jesus and his uh, followers lived at a time where people had the, the First Testament, the Hebrew scriptures memorized. So they were all memorized. So when he makes references to First Testament scriptures, they know what he's talking about. All, they, they get all the references to it. It's like this sort of almost coded or, or uh, insider language. They're like, oh, oh, he's referring to this. So when Jesus says not seven but 77 times, he's referring to a story from Genesis, Genesis 4. And uh, right at the beginning of the Bible. And they would have all got it. And then even after Matthew wrote this gospel and handed it around, the people reading it who all had, and we know that Matthew wrote for those who, who came from a Hebrew background, from a Jewish background, they would have all got it when they read it. But we don't read the scripture enough that, or, or we don't know all the cues and the references. So anyway, here it is. Genesis chapter 4. Go back and read it. It's awesome. It's a story of Cain and Abel. Do you remember Cain and Abel? They're the two brothers from Genesis. And uh, Cain is jealous of his brother Abel. And God's like, be careful. Be careful with jealousy. That, that can go wrong. But Cain doesn't listen. And he ends up killing his brother. And then because he killed his brother, he gets banished. And when he's banished, uh, he goes to a, another land and uh, he marries and they have a son, Enoch, and he creates a city called Enoch, uh, named after his son. So Genesis then tells like it's five generations later and this city uh, is like its founder. It's, it's a bad city, bad things are happening. Um, it's, it, there's a lot of violence and uh, and uh, revenge and, and record, record, you know, all of that anger. It's an angry, dangerous, dangerous city to live in. And so and as a way to sort of give us a view into that city, there's this little vignette. After five generations, it tells this little story about one of the residents of this city, and his name is Lamech. And uh, Lamech writes a poem. He's, he's a poet. And Lamech's poem is called The Song of the Sword. And the poem is like talking about how awesome Lamech is. It's a very macho poem. It's about, he's like so cool. So uh, he says this poem and basically the poem says, somebody came and uh, injured me. Lamech says, somebody came and injured me. They, they hurt me. And in return, I killed that person because I don't only give seven times vengeance, I give 77 times vengeance. <gasps> wow, right? So Lamech in this, this sort of anti-kingdom uh, uh, of heaven city shows what it's like to live in this other way where vengeance is sevenfold, where the response to somebody wronging you isn't forgiveness as Jesus is teaching it is to wrong them back and to wrong them back 77 fold in Lamech's place so Jesus is offering this radical upside down way of living in the world this idea where you don't you don't revenge you don't seek vengeance not even a little bit you seek forgiveness you seek to release the feelings of resentment, release the feelings of vengeance to someone else. And not just 77, seven times, but 77 times. It's this, this counter to human nature, because Lamech is sort of the embodiment of human nature, because if somebody hurts us, it's our human nature to hurt them back. If someone hits you, you want to hit them back. It's human nature. Watch little children as they play. This is this is our human condition. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is different than that. The way of following Jesus is completely upside down to that. So not unbridled 
revenge as it is with Lamech. Unbridled revenge, 77 times the vengeance. It's unbridled forgiveness with Jesus, 77 times the forgiveness. Isn't that a neat little thing to find out about this story? Anyway, I, I hope that, that we can appreciate the, the, the radical call that we've been called to, that we have been called to this idea of radical forgiveness through Jesus. And this is what he's teaching the disciples and teaching us in this parable that we find in the Gospel of Matthew. And always keeping in mind that forgiveness is not condoning. It's not saying it's okay. It's not forgetting. It's not wiping it away from our memories. It's not excusing and it's not disregarding. It is releasing these feelings of resentment or vengeance for someone else, regardless of whether they have actually deserved it or not. This is our radical call to forgiveness. And can you, can you imagine what the world would be like if we actually lived that out? If we actually lived this idea of radical forgiveness, of unbridled forgiveness, of not seven times, but 77 times, it would be the kingdom of heaven indeed. Amen. Our next song is Hand in the Hand. Look at yourself and you can 
We are called to this new and different form of humanity, and I pray that we are able to live this out through the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. 